Hello everyone, and welcome to this quick Blender tutorial where we're going to see how to model this little Play-Doh-like crate from scratch. By the end of this video, you'll know how to transform Blender's basic startup cube into this cute crate shape, thanks to the powers of the inset, the extrude, and the bevels. Alright, so let's hop into Blender and use the startup scene as our base template. We can start by renaming the cube to Crate. Now, before we actually get to modeling our little crate object, let's make sure that it has the right pivot point. This is the small orange dot that Blender shows us whenever we select the object, and it's the point that you place when you change the position of your object in the world. So what could be nice is rather than having it in the middle of our object, to instead put it at the bottom. This way, if we ever export this object and transfer it to a game engine, like Godot, Unity or Unreal, or even if we just want to move it around in our Blender scene, we'll be able to grab the bottom and snap it on the floor without having to worry about adding an extra offset. To do this, we just need to go into Edit Mode, select all of our vertices, and translate them by one along the vertical z-axis. You see that now, if we go back to Object Mode, our cube's origin point is indeed at the origin of the scene as expected. Alright, so with that out of the way, time to actually get to modeling our crate. To begin with, let's select all of our faces except the bottom one, and then press I to inset them. For now, you see that we're making sort of a vertical slicing of the cube, but if we press I again to inset each face individually, then we instantly get smaller square faces on each selected side that we can make smaller or bigger by dragging our mouse. These will be the inner faces of our crate, the small squares that make the body of the crate, while the rest will be the external structure. So when you're satisfied with the size of those inner faces, just click to validate the inset. Now to actually bring them inwards, we're going to use the normals of our faces and extrude them along these specific directions. For that, while making sure that only our inserted faces are selected, we're going to press Alt plus E and pick the Extrude Faces Along Normals option. Then we can drag our mouse to choose how deep we want those faces to be extruded, and like before, click when we're happy with the result. Alright, this is starting to look a bit like a crate. And by the way, note that if you want to see the edges of your object a bit better, you can go to your Solid Shading Viewport options over here in the top bar and enable the Cavity option. Then bring up the ridge and valley sliders to the max, and there you go, you now have extra highlights on the edges that really help visualize the shape. Okay, now let's add the diagonal reinforcing blocks that I'm highlighting here on this image. So because we want them to be in the create object as well, and not other meshes in the scene, let's first tab into edit mode, and then press shift plus A to add a new cube. Then we're going to rescale the cube to make it a thinner wood chunk, Go in front view and rotate it 45 degrees along the view axis. Also note that because this is a separate piece in the same object as the body of the crate, we can reselect this new chunk and only this new chunk by hovering it with our mouse and pressing L to select linked elements. But anyway, now let's duplicate it to add the same reinforcing bit on the other vertical side of our crate Except that, of course, at the moment, if we go to the top view and try to rotate our copy, it just rotates in place. What we'd like is for it to rotate relative to the center so that it also instantly moves to the right face. We can do this easily by changing our rotation pivot to the Scene 3D cursor. Now if we rotate our object by 90 degrees around the vertical axis, we indeed get a new rotated chunk on this other side of the cube, and we can of course redo the same thing to create the two other ones. Okay, so we now have a pretty cool crate shape. We could even set up some point lights in our scene, go to the rendered shading mode, and give our object two materials for the inner and outer parts by using Blender's basic materials, giving them yellowish or brownish tints, and assigning each face the right material. But this crate obviously isn't as smooth as what I showed you at the beginning of the video. So, how can we make it cuter and more play the like Well, the trick is to use what we call bevels. Basically, bevels are a way of adding geometry to an edge or a vertex to make it softer. 
Typically, it can transform a hard edge into a smoother one by adding subdivisions to the right angle. And for a cute clay or play dolac -like model, like what we want to make, that's a great tool because it instantly turns your model into something rounder and more playful. So to apply a bevel in Blender, we can use Ctrl plus B on an edge or Ctrl plus Shift plus B on a vertex to do it manually on just the selected items. But we can also use the bevel modifier to apply bevels globally on the entire object. We can then control the size and the resolution of the bevels with the amount and segments values. But using the modifier as is can sometimes be a bit too basic. Typically, because it applies bevels everywhere, you might lose some important lines in your mesh that you'd like to keep a bit sharper. So to better control how the modifier is applied, you can use a cool extra option of the modifier, the vertex group based limit method. So let's define a new empty vertex group on our create object in the mesh tab, turn on the option in the modifier and assign a new vertex group. We see that the bevels have now disappeared because for now there are no vertices in our vertex group. But if we go back to the vertex group panel, select some edges in our object and assign them to the group, then we see we have bevels only in those specific spots. Thanks to this trick, we can pick the bevels we want easily and smooth out the shape in a better way. To add planks on the top of the crate, we can use the knife tool by pressing K to cut down the face into planks. Then select each of those new edges and bevel them manually with Ctrl plus B. This way, if we scroll up to increment the segments by one, we effectively add two new edges on each side of our edges. Finally, all that's left to do is to bring the middle edges down and do some extra manual bevels with Ctrl plus B on the external edges. If you want to shade your object smooth instead of flat to avoid this faceted look, then at first you might have some weird lighting artifacts. To avoid this, you just need to enable the Auto Smooth Normals limit. Note that you can also apply this Auto Smooth shading directly using the F3 Quick Common Access menu. Also, to make the object a bit less plastic and a bit more clay-like, you might want to tune up the roughness on your materials and perhaps readjust the colors slightly. But anyway, there you go! You now know how to turn Blender's basic startup cube into this simple cute create shape from scratch. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned a few things. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. And of course, if you have other ideas of cool Blender tricks that you'd like to learn, tell me in the comments. As usual, thanks a lot for watching and take care.